<laughs> he wants to be a superstar. All right, if you'll make your way back to your seats, good morning. Good morning, Life Church Humansville. Welcome. It's so good to see you. Thank you for making your way back to your seats. Our ushers are going to prepare to wait on us for your tithe and offerings this morning. This is, uh, this is just as much a part of our worship as our singing and as our praying, as the preaching and the teaching of God's Word. So uh, thank you for being ready to participate. The scriptures, the scriptures tell us that God loves a cheerful, generous giver. And so uh, give cheerfully and generously this morning. Those of you that are joining us now online, we welcome you. And uh, we remind you that you're able to participate in this part of our worship with our online giving tool, give to lifechurch.com and follow the prompts there. All right, let's pray. Lord, we love you. We thank you for blessing us today. Thank you for the power and the presence of your spirit that we have already sensed in this place today. Thank you for the miracles that are already happening and taking place. And uh, Lord, we just celebrate your faithfulness and your goodness. Lord, we thank you that we get to be part of this ministry and uh, your kingdom by giving of our resources that you have already uh, blessed us with. We give them back to you generously and cheerfully, Lord, asking you to bless them and multiply them. Let them uh, help us to further the kingdom work, uh, not only in Humansville, but around the world. We give you praise for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. While they're doing that, let me uh, remind you, uh, Tent Revival is seven days away. This time next Sunday, we will be outside under the big tent, and uh, it's going to be a wonderful week. If you have not been planning to be a part of that, I would encourage you to do whatever you can to change your schedule and, uh, and be part of that. You can find details uh, on our Facebook page as far as times and, and uh, dates of the services and who's speaking when. I'm, I'm only scheduled to speak the Sunday morning. And then Pastor Dwayne will be with us for every evening service. Uh, we have a live praise and worship team uh, coming out of Springfield to help us with music throughout the evenings. And so it's just going to be a great time. Uh, God is moving in a very special way already. And I believe that he has much, much more in store for us in the days and weeks ahead. Amen? There are ways that you can help us and be a part of what God is doing by volunteering. Several of you already have their sign-up sheets uh, on the wall next to the information booth where you can sign up. I know the one area that we still have a big need in is parking. And uh, so if you could help us with uh, being a parking attendant one night, just kind of making sure people don't park in two spaces when they only need one. And when this lot's full, you know, blocking the entrance and things like that, it's not it's not hard. It's just got to be on your feet for about an hour or so. And so if you could sign up for that. Speaking of parking, this just came to my mind. I meant to put it in the notes. If you, uh, as a regular member of the church, if you are able to walk uh, you know, pretty easily, you don't have any uh, you know, issues with walking like across the lawn, during the tent revival, I'm going to ask if, if you would first fill up the parking lot in the little yellow building next door. Uh, we, we received permission from them last week to use their parking. And so uh, for our regular people, if you'll park over there and just walk through the grass up to the tent, that will leave the regular parking open to guests that may be coming. And, uh, you know, we're just going to have to play the parking by ear. If it doesn't rain anymore between now and then, we'll be able to use the back field if we need to to park cars out there. But if it does rain between now and then, we won't. And then any overflow will just have to park on the streets and, and make their way in from that way. If we get people way out there or in the ex extended area of the parking, uh, we do have a golf cart coming. Somebody has, has offered to uh, loan us a golf cart. And so, you know, if you have to park a long ways away, we'll, we'll do our best to make it as easy as possible to get you to the tent and uh, so that you can 
listen, it's going to be a good walk from one side of the tent to the other. So we're just, we're just, we're just trying to be a blessing, right? So um, there are plenty of places for you to uh, be of assistance. So check that list out. The calendar on the back wall is uh, uh, just putting people putting their initials or a mark on days that you're fasting and praying for the services. And listen, I know that medical conditions sometimes prevent some people from fasting as far as food is concerned. But even if you're not able to fast, if you're, if you're committed to praying uh, on those days, mark that. We just want to know that somebody in the church, several people in the church are praying and fasting every day as we make this last push up to the revival. And the last thing about that, let me remind you that we are going to have a baptismal service on the Wednesday night, the last night of the, of the uh, revival services. Uh, the, the stock tank was delivered over the weekend. It's in the back. And uh, we'll fill it up a couple days early, put that heater in it. So it'll be, it'll be you know, anybody got a little air hose, we'll turn it into a jacuzzi. No. Huh? Dunk you. Okay, sign up in the back. And uh, so um, we just want to do everything we can uh, to get people off to a good start in their walk with Jesus. And so if you've been a Christian for a while and you've not been baptized in water and you're not sure the significance of that, talk to me or, or my wife or one of the deacons. They can help you uh, understand the significance of that. And, uh, and, and, or if you're a new Christian, uh, follow the example of Christ and be baptized in water. Make a public declaration of your faith in Him. Amen? All right. Kids are headed to the back today. I know Miss Margot is going. Uh, Judy is going. Judy, do you go every week? Okay. 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 It just seems like I always see you going. And so thank you for your service, ladies, uh, ministering to our kids there in the back. Appreciate it very much. Uh, <laughs> and uh, also, I know Denise is in the nursery today, so thank you, Denise, for your faithful service back there. I heard, uh, where did, did David, is he back there? Yeah, uh, our foreign exchange student helped Tina in the nursery last week or the week before, and he loved it. He's like, can I work in the nursery? So uh, he's like a big kid, so uh, we're, we're letting him participate back there and I don't know if they uh, have nursery in the, their churches back in Italy or not, but um, anyway, he's experiencing American culture. Amen? All right, I love it when God moves in unusual ways. Amen? Amen. I love it when he does something that we weren't expecting. Uh, that just thrills me. Uh, one, of our, one of our prayer services uh, in, the, in the last couple of weeks uh, an individual came to me and said that they were refilled uh, with the baptism in the Holy Spirit during that prayer time. They had, they had been baptized in the Holy Spirit years ago, had not uh, been used or been, uh, had not used that gift in a long time. And during, the, during one of the songs, it just, the Holy Spirit just moved over them. So excited about that. We had people coming off the highway, uh, coming in, and they came looking for an AA meeting. But uh, we told them about Jesus and about the revival and so we're praying for a young man named Cole and believing that Cole is going to be back for uh, revival services. He took some flyer, a flyer with him and he said, is this spirit filled? And I said, oh yeah. And he said, good. And so we're just going to believe that he'll come back. Maybe he'll bring an army with him, right? So anyway, I love it when God does that. Dan uh, Barry, uh, who's been with us, you guys have been with about six months now that you've been for? Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm a pastor. I'm evangelistic. And uh, so anyway, uh, uh, not too long ago, Dan and Don both contracted COVID, and uh, he's, he's healthy now. So everybody can breathe. And uh, anyway, he went into the hospital. He was at Cox in the uh, COVID ward, which was like a big, what, 50 beds, 70 bed open bay, everybody in there with COVID. He shared with me, I don't want to share all of his story, but he shared with me that they expected that only 10% of the people in that bay would come out. And uh, that was, their expectations were thwarted by the hand of God. <laughs> so I've asked him to come and share a couple testimonies. Uh, if you were following on Facebook, he shared some things about doors that God opened for him to share the gospel while he's laying there gasping for breath. 
And uh, so I've asked him to come and just take a few minutes, share a couple testimonies about uh, what God did while he was there. And then when he's done, I'm going to come back and, and share a message with you. So uh, you're going to get a double whammy today. So Dan, come on. He's going to be on mic two back there in the uh, sound booth. I think the, uh, the last time I was up here uh, was right before I got sick. Um, I preached the Sunday service and uh, came into contact with people uh, with COVID that Wednesday. And so I'd, I'd messaged the church and said we wouldn't be here, you know, to make sure we didn't get all that to everybody else here. But uh, one of the things, you know, before I get into this, that, that I preached about that day was who does God say you are, not who does the world say you are, just as a little reminder. And, and, and that came up as a reminder to me. Because, see, I got sick that Sunday. You know, so I, I was Wednesday through Saturday I was fine. Sunday I couldn't, couldn't move. Started sleeping 18, 20 hours a day, hurting all over. Uh, by Wednesday, I'm barely breathing. My, my skin's starting to turn like an, a gray color, a little ashen. And uh, so they, they shipped me down, like, like Pastor said, to, to Cox South, uh, where I was put in a COVID ward. And so I was sitting there, and that whole time, you know, I, I didn't really sleep much at that point because I was kind of scared, to be honest. And I was sitting there, I was feeling sorry for myself. I was depressed. I'm like, man, I'm, I'm here. And, you know, then I heard the, the nurse and the doctor, uh, you know, it was, it was a 70-bed open unit. We just had little plastic screens separating each of the, uh, the beds. So you could hear everything going on with your neighbor. And the nurse's station, it was right in front of where my bed was. And, you know, I overheard the nurses and the doctors talking. And they said, you know, we've got people on, on respirators here. We've got people without respirators that just aren't doing good. And, you know, they said less than about 10% would, would make it out alive. And, you know, that, that hit me when I was really at my lowest. And so the Holy Spirit started speaking into me. And he said, who do I say you are? And I, I got to thinking, I said, well, you said that I'm healed. So, so something a lot of you don't know is if we go back in time, I can count at least 12, if not more, medically impossible situations. You know, my, my intestine ruptured, I told you about that. I learned to walk again when they said I'd never walk again. I came out from a coma they said I wouldn't wake up from. I've had eight heart attacks and I have zero heart damage. I mean, God is good. So I started thinking, I'm like, well, I'm more than that. So, you know, they, they gave me my, my shot of pain medicine. I, I took a little nap. I woke up the next day, and I, I was thinking different. And I, I started thinking, I'm like, what would I be doing if I was home? I like to sing. I'm not good at singing, but I like to sing. You don't want to hear that. So I, I, I had my, my, my phone with me, and I turned on turned on the, the Pandora app, and I'm, I'm singing along with, with my, my gospel music. You know, I'm coughing up blood every now and then. It didn't matter. I just kept singing. And the nurses, they came by, and they just kind of looked at me funny. You know, they, they looked at me weird, so I turned it up. So, and, you know, they're, they're coming by, and they're like, people are trying to sleep. I'm like, I was too, but you guys came and gave me a shot, and now I'm awake. So I kept singing, and I'm, I, I can be annoying sometimes. But here's, here's what happens. God starts telling me, it's not about you. And, and being sick is awful. I don't want anyone to ever go through this. But I was in that bed, and I'm singing along every bit that I'm awake. Now, admittedly, that's not very long. You know, and in between, I'd, I'd send a pastor some sermon or something I caught somewhere. I don't know what time I sent it to you. I apologize if it was too late. <laughs> but... Uh, I started just using what time I had to praise and worship. And so the next day, they had moved the screens for some reason. And I look out across, and this lady across the, the, the aisle from me, she's sitting there with her phone out singing Christian songs. And I look to my left, and there's a guy over here that's singing gospel songs. And I look to my right, and there's two up this way singing gospel songs. And the nurses just like, you guys are keeping everybody up. 
And so we kept it up. We never talked to one another. It was just feeding off of each other, the Holy Spirit working there amongst us. And then the next day, I look, and people have Bibles out. Everyone's reading their Bibles. They're either on their phone or they have an actual Bible out. They're, they're reading it. And now we're discussing bed to bed. Like, hey, did you read this chapter? You know, in between the curtains. It was during this time that, you know, we, we, we see all these people. They're, they're starting to not, not be laying there so quiet like I was. You know, I was, I was depressed. I was, I was upset. Uh, I think anyone would naturally be so. But uh, the people around me, they, their spirits started picking up. And when their spirits started picking up, well, those nurses, they had a little hop in their step too. They didn't understand what was going on, but they, they were a little bit easier to deal with. And so the, the nurses, they start coming up to me, and they're talking to me while, while they're providing care. And I'm like, I'm like, I'm not worried about this disease. And they're like, they're like, Mr. Barry, you could have died from this. You were pretty bad off when they brought you in. And I'm like, I'm, I'm not going nowhere. And I'm like, I'm good. And so they're, they're like, well, you know, and they're, they're giving me the, the steps that I need to take to get out of the hospital. And they're, they're saying months that this could take. Uh, I was there for two weeks, I believe, uh, a little over two weeks. But uh, so that in itself is a testimony. But the nurses, they start talking to me, and it, 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 was, it, was, it was funny to me how this happened, because it happened the same way every time. Because there was five, four, five nurses I talked to, four, uh, that ended up praying at bedside with me, including one of my doctors. And so they came up to me, and, and they're like, I don't understand why your tests are improving so quickly. This, this doesn't normally happen. And I'm like, well, my God heals. My God delivers. I said, my, my God, he, impossible is nothing to him. And so they, they said, well, okay. You know, it's, it's kind of like I, yeah, I've got some incredible testimonies. You know, like I, I shared a little bit, you know, about, about the heart and the intestine and stuff. But this put me in a unique situation that I'd never been in before. Because sometimes when you give a testimony to people, they're like, that sounds great. And I'm happy for you. But really, did it really happen that way? And sometimes they question that. And I said, you have my chart. Look up this year and this month and see what happened. And so as they began to look it up, they, they walked away saying, yeah, okay, whatever. You know, and they, they come back and they're like, I, I read your chart, what you told me to look up. That's impossible. How, how, how did that happen? And, I'm, and I, I said to him, and the, it was the same thing every time. When you have a break, come see to me and I'll talk to you about what my God thinks of the impossible. And so that's, that's, that's the outreach that ended up happening. You know, I, I, didn't, I didn't get to talk to the people in, in the opposing beds that much. But those nurses and doctors that touched every one of us, you know, the... You know, a, a word of faith, a little positivity, it raised the whole spirit of everyone in the place. And when I left, there were 10 people, I believe, that was there, and everybody else had gone home. Now, we lost four or five people that did pass away. You know, it's, it's a deadly disease, um, you know, if, if, if it does progress that far. But that four or five people out of 70... That's, that's not less than 10%. When, when you see 50, 60 people go home that they said was going to be dead, that's a reason to praise God for. You know, so they're, they're marching out of there. Now, some of these nurses, I don't know if they're going to show up or not, but some of them, they're planning on being at this tent revival the last I heard from them. We'll see. I, I hope they come because I want to hear what happened after I left. But it's, it's just about being obedient. And, you know, I, I, I'm ending here, but, uh, you know, I was telling Pastor Carl, uh, I got some new shoes. Yeah, hold these up for a second. Say, I don't know if you can see them, but it, they say walk by faith on them. And it's kind of funny because I mentioned to my wife, and I know she's watching at home, uh, I called these my, my funeral shoes because we've seen them. And I, I told my wife, I'm like, those look really cool. I'd, I'd like to have those. 
And we knew that we didn't have the money at that time to, to buy any shoes. But when I got so bad in the hospital and they, they were telling her that things were pretty horrible, she just buys them, you know, because she's like, well, that's something he wanted. I'm going to give him that, you know, while, while I can. Well, they got lost in the mail. They came in this week. So uh, I, I find it, it's, it's kind, of, kind of ironic that the message walk by faith that's what we've been talking about the last several weeks, along with the, the spirits of, uh, that, that are against revival spirit. Uh, but walking by faith is exactly what I did that entire time I was in the hospital. You know, because it's something, I, I couldn't have done it on my own. So that's, that's my, my testimony. Yeah. <clears throat> As he was sharing uh, the, 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 the story in the Bible of Paul and Silas being in the jail and beginning to praise the Lord in the middle of the night came to my mind and I thought, you just never know what God will do in and through you if you will just be obedient. Amen? All right. Uh, let's... Uh, uh, jump into the message. I've been looking forward to sharing this message this morning. In fact, it's been a great few weeks. God gave me very, very clear direction uh, for the services and the messages leading up uh, to the first week of revival. And uh, next week, uh, Eli, pop up that black and red screen, the revive, return, repent, revive screen. Next week, uh, the Lord willing, he doesn't change the direction of the of the service. I don't believe he's going to because this has been in my spirit for several weeks now. The title of next week's sermon is right there. That panel has been up there for probably two years, um, and uh, that's where we're headed next week. Uh, if we will return to the Lord, repent of our sins, he saves us, he revives us, he restores us, amen? And so the, the next Sunday morning is very much going to be a, a salvation-type message, so if you have friends, family, neighbors, uh, co-workers, kids, parents, whatever, that are not living for the Lord, uh, if you can get them there Sunday morning, I promise you they will hear the gospel message of Jesus uh, and his saving power presented to them, and they will be given an opportunity to respond, to accept him as Lord and Savior. That's important, and what a great way to start off four days of revival services. Amen? So uh, I'm looking forward to that. We just finished up the anti-revival spirits, as Dan mentioned. Uh, we're about to finish the Breaking Intimidation series on Wednesday nights, and uh, I'm just excited for what God is doing in us. He is, he is preparing us for revival. Amen? And so today, God is uh, taking us to a passage of Scripture in Isaiah chapter 54. So find that as you're going. And uh, as I was thinking about this, this message and this passage of Scripture this week, uh, I happened to, to uh, in, my, in our reading through the Bible schedule, I'm, I'm in Isaiah. I'm a little bit ahead. I don't know where, the, where you are right, if you're right on schedule, but I'm, I'm a week or so ahead of schedule. And I noticed in the reading that September 28th, I believe it is, on the schedule, we will be reading Isaiah 54 while we're smack dab in the middle of the tent revival. And that'll make more sense here in a minute when I read this passage of Scripture to you. So I believe that God works all things out uh, for good. He plans, He orchestrates, He, he leads and guides us. Uh, the, you know, scripture says uh, the steps of a righteous person are ordered by God. And I believe He's uh, orchestrating and ordering everything as we lead up to revival. So let me read for you the text, um, and then we're going to jump right into it. Uh, Isaiah 54, verses 1 through 5, and then verse 17. They'll be on the screen for you here. Instead of taking the time to find them there, I'm going to read them right off the screen. I got used to doing this on Wednesday night. So here we go, Isaiah 54. Shout for joy, O barren one. You who have borne no child, break forth into joyful shouting and cry aloud, you who have not travailed. For the sons of the desolate one will be more numerous than the sons of the married woman, says the Lord. Now, pause for just a second. Some of you are like, 
Huh? Right? I was, I was with you to begin with. Okay. Enlarge the place of your tent. Stretch out the curtains of your dwellings. Spare not. Lengthen your cords and strengthen your pegs. For you will spread abroad to the right and to the left, and your descendants will possess nations and will resettle the desolate cities. Fear not, for you will not be put to shame and do not feel humiliated, for you will not be disgraced, but you will forget the shame of your youth and the reproach of your widowhood you will remember no more. For your husband is your maker, capital M there, that's a reference to God, whose name is the Lord of hosts, and your Redeemer is the Holy One of Israel, who is called the God of all the earth, Isaiah 54, 1 through 5. We'll come back to 17 a little bit later here. Hang tight with me for just a second. Let's pray over the word of the Lord. Father, thank you for your word. Pray, God, you'll uh, give us a clarity of thought and understanding today that you will speak a word of encouragement to our hearts, to our minds, to our spirit, God. And Lord, and we will, uh, we will be stirred up and, uh, and challenged and encouraged and equipped to move forward full speed ahead uh, and Lord, accomplish the will and the plan that you have for us. Help us as we look at your word today, I pray in Jesus' name, amen. Let me start with giving you a little bit of history uh, uh, in regards to this. If we apply this passage to the Jewish people after they have been, been released from captivity, which is the context in which it is written, it is a prophecy concerning their increase as a nation. Jerusalem has been barren. It is desolate. It is all but, uh, but destroyed. But God has a plan. And the promise of God is that Jerusalem will once again be uh, restored. What has been broken will be uh, mended. What is in ruins will be rebuilt. The people will prosper and they will multiply. What has been taken by the Babylonians, which are evil, wicked people, will be returned to its rightful Jewish owner. And once again, the blessings... And the favor of God will rest upon his people. She will, Jerusalem, she will show forth the glory of God and his faithfulness to his people. That's what this is all about in, this, in the context of this passage that we're looking at here. This will not only happen for Jerusalem, though, but it will also happen for the suburbs and the surrounding communities there in that area. And so Jerusalem and the Jewish people are promised by God to be restored. The walls are going to be rebuilt and expanded. The people are going to be restored. The influence of the Jewish nation will be forever felt throughout history. In fact, they will be history makers. If you know anything, if you follow anything about uh, of, of Israel, especially in modern day, they have been, they have been history makers. They have, they have stood against one attack after another. Everybody hates them. Everybody is against them. And yet they continue to prosper. They are God's chosen people. And I'm just going to say this for the record. God helped the United States of America when we turn our back on Israel. It'll happen. God help us when it does. History, record, history records that about 42,000 Jews came out of Babylon when they, when they were released from captivity from Babylon. That's about a 15th, one 15th of those that came out of Israel or out of Egypt uh, when Moses was sent by God to Pharaoh and said, let my people go. And finally, after all the plagues and everything, uh, Pharaoh lets them go. You know the story. They, they take off and uh, get to the Red Sea. Pharaoh comes with his chariots, God parts the Red Sea, they go across, the waters close on Pharaoh. For a day they celebrate, a little while they celebrate, then they start murmuring and complaining. They end up wandering in the wilderness for 40 years instead of going into the promised land that God had promised them. And eventually they'll get there, but that's, uh, that's, the, that's the scenario. Uh, out of the, that, a, fifth of, a fifteenth of those that came out of Egypt 
is all that remained to come out of the captivity under the Babylonians. But 500 years later, just before the Romans conquered, conquered them, it's estimated that this, this uh, 42,000 people had grown and multiplied to 3 million people. All of this is good and all of it's important for us to understand and to see the hand of God working in his people. But my question is, what's the application of this scripture to the church today? And so in, in an attempt to help us understand what that is, I want to look at what the application was to the early church right after Jesus has been uh, crucified and then rose from the dead, ascended to the Father, the church is born and it begins to, to grow and develop. I want, I want to use that kind of as a springboard in parts of this to help us to see what does this passage in Isaiah 54 mean for us today. As a little side note, in many aspects, the application uh, uh, for us today and for the church today is from what we see uh, in the early church and what they, they experienced this as well. So the first point comes from verse 1, and I've titled this first one, Slow to Grow. Slow to Grow, and here's what I mean by that point. There was a period of time, not for a long time, but a period of time when the early church was small. The, 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 the very beginnings of Christianity, it was small. Honestly, nothing more than a band of brothers. And then a few friends, and uh, you know, and, and over time, the gospel message of Jesus Christ goes out, and as the gospel message of Christ is presented, growth comes. The church begins to grow. I love the passage of Scripture in Zechariah chapter 4, verse 10, that says, Do not despise the small beginnings, <laughs> right? For the, word, for the Lord rejoices to see the work begin. Now, I would add to that, he also rejoices in seeing the work continue and seeing the work grow and mature and develop and accomplish what he desired for it to, to accomplish. But, but this says, don't despise the small beginnings for the Lord rejoices in that, okay? Why? Why does he rejoice in little things? Because everything has to start somewhere. Everything has to start somewhere. The Gentiles, back in the early church days, had less religion among them than the Jews did. The Jewish culture was all about religion. Keeping the law and, and you know, the, 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 the rituals of being clean and all of that stuff that went along with it. But the plan of God was to include the Gentiles in his plan of salvation. And now Christianity, the message of Christ, has touched virtually every corner of the earth. You know, that's one of the things that has to happen before Jesus can return. The gospel message has to be preached throughout the world, and then, he, then the return. We're, with technology and internet and satellites and radio and TV and all this stuff, it's happening. We're close, we're close. That's another message. So God in, planned to include the Gentiles Christianity spread across the world, and millions of non-Jewish worshipers now worship Jehovah, Jehovah God. And it all started with a few good men and a few good women whose hearts were right with the Lord. That's the early church. Let's talk about Life Church, Life Church Humansville. We started with a handful. Some mornings it looks like all we have is a handful. But I, I don't let that discourage me. I know I talk about a lot because I want everybody to know. I want everybody to know the love and the grace and the goodness of God and to accept him as their savior and to live for him and enjoy that life because I've seen what he's done for me and I know if he'll do it for me, he'll do it for you. But that's what we had here. When Margo and I came here five and a half years ago, whoosh. That was a flash in time. Can you believe it, Pam? Five and a half. Kirk and Connie, you've been here from the beginning. You were here before me. Anybody else that was here before we got here? Johnny, Anna. Yeah. So oh, 
Stall Smith. Yeah, we were connected down at Morrisville, so yeah. So here's the deal. When we got here um, five and a half years ago, there were about 45 or 50 people. And, um, but the mass majority of those people were from the church that started this, that, that reopened and you know, did the remodel and tried to, because this building had closed, this church had ceased to exist. So a bunch of people came. There were not a lot of Humansville people here, right? Those of you that were here. And so about a month or so after Margo and I got here, the mass majority of those people went back south of Bolivar. <laughs> and we had about 20 people. But don't despise the place of small beginnings. Because God works in that. Now that number, that 20 ebbed and flowed depending on who was really wanting to, to, to be in church and to be close to the Lord and, and then those who were just playing church. The fact of the matter, we still see that. You know, there's, you, you see people that are, that are plugged in and committed and, and they buy in and it's their church and they, and they serve and they give and they participate. And, you know, there's both sides of that coin. But here's what, here's what has happened. Because of faithful obedience and heartfelt service to the Lord, we've grown. We've grown. Now, I, I, I put some numbers in here because numbers represent people, represent souls, and, and uh, they're, they're how, we, how we judge. And what I'm about to share with you, you'd be like, Pastor, that's not very encouraging. You're on a downward slide. Well, you just wait and see what God does. Last week, we had 76 here. The week before that, we had 103. Kirk, are we still at 64 today? Okay. So we're a little bit up from what we would have as a normal Sunday morning. Why does that matter? Listen, I love it when we have larger crowds of people like we did two weeks ago. You know, we had a baptismal service. We had a lot of guests in from, for family to watch that. But here's why. I, I love it because it helps me keep the faith and to stay the course for the vision that God has given us for this church. And, uh, and let me be clear, we should, I feel like we should be running 100 plus every Sunday, you know, easy, minimum. Who said that? I need to buy you lunch. <laughs> Glory to God, that's the kind of faith I'm talking about, you know. You're like, well, you only got 115 chairs. Listen, they're, they're stacked. We got 161 chairs that are comfortable, and we got folding chairs, and we'll go to two services if we have to. You know, until everybody knows Jesus. So we, we want to, we want to, we should have all those people here. We could, if we could get past uh, the fear of COVID and we could get uh, everyone to be consistent and to be here faithfully, we would be doing it. Every, every Sunday when Margo and I are, are eating lunch or if we're running somewhere in the afternoon, we're running through our minds trying to identify who was not here. Not so we can say, shame on you. But so if, if it becomes a pattern, we go like, hey, whoa, 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 what's going on? You know, try to keep people from falling through the cracks. And it happens, you know. We're, we're human, you know. We, it just happens. But the goal is to, is to not let people go two, three, four, five, six weeks before we even realize they're gone. At that point, they're gone, <laughs> you know. So we want to we wanna encourage that. Well, that hundred should be easy. That should be minimum. Thank you, Kay. And, and at that point, you know, we, we put more chairs in. Okay, we get 120, 130, 150. Listen, we start having two services. I, I, I preach at 8 o'clock in the morning and 1030. And, uh, you know, we'll have a, some people might get excited. Maybe we do the 8 o'clock service as a traditional service and the 1030 service as contemporary, you know, and and, and meet two different, two different crowds of people. Uh, I, I'm, I'm ready, right? So I believe the day will come. I believe the day will come when that will happen. And I believe it's going to be sooner than later. So don't despise small beginnings. Don't despise slow growth. Oftentimes, listen, oftentimes, slow growth is better than fast growth. I'll take slow growth over a flash in the pan any day of the week because it's healthy and it's sustainable. In this prophecy from Isaiah, he declared that God's people would not only be restored, 
but they would grow and they would prosper and they would flourish. And I believe God is saying to Life Church Humansville, your growth may have been slow, but it has been steady. You have been faithful with the little. Now I'm about to release a growth spurt on you. Buckle up, buttercup. Why? Well, a couple of have one clapper over here and a waver in the back. And <clears throat> listen, you can go with me for this journey, uh, or you can get lost and stay behind. Let's go. Let's grow. Oh, there we go. Why do I believe this? I'm glad you're ask, you ask. Look back at verse 1 again at this phrase in Isaiah's prophecy. God says, For the desolate one will be more numerous than the sons of the married one. The sons of the married one represents the Jews, but the sons of the desolate ones is speaking to the Gentiles. And who are the sons of the desolate woman? We are the Gentiles. That's us. It's the church. It's the it's the Christian church now, but listen, the church in America has been on a, in a tailspin, a downward spiral for years. Attendance is down, salvations are down, commitment to the things of God is down, and under any other circumstance, we would, uh, be, it would be natural for us to lose heart and to give up hope. But this isn't a natural circumstance. Huh? And God is God. This isn't a natural circumstance. We are His church. And He has called us and commissioned us to fulfill the Great Commission, taking the gospel message of Jesus Christ to the remotest, uttermost parts of the world. Listen, Humansville is an uttermost part of the world. <laughs> We ran into some individual <laughs> in Jefferson City yesterday, and he was a little odd, and he was uh, very eccentric and very flamboyant and very out there. He, he came out of the crowd and was marching with one of the bands, and kind of like he was the director of the band, and anyway, he, he saw us walk up and Picked us out for whatever reason. Where are you from? And I really didn't want to talk to the guy. I mean, I'll just be honest. I'm thinking, it's a fruit loop. You know, I wasn't as holy as Brother Dan here, you know, looking for opportunity to get people saved. I'm just thinking, this guy is whack. I said, Humansville. Where in the world is Humansville? You know, we're the remotest part of the earth. But we've been called and commissioned to fulfill that great, great commission, to take the message to our world and to the othermost part. Let me remind you, whom he calls, he equips, amen? And here's what I know about his church. His word promises us that the gates of hell will not prevail against his church. We've been planting seeds of the... Woo-woo, I heard that. Who said that? Was it that little one? She said, woo-woo. Preach, girl. <laughs> We've been planting seeds of the gospel in the hearts of people in this community and also in places around the world through prayers and support of our world missionaries. And I believe that God is about to give us a harvest, a, a, a good harvest, a great harvest. Let me back up for just a second. I mentioned that of uh, taking the gospel around the world. Uh, let, me make a, let me make a pastor plug for giving to missions, okay? Ah, uh, so it's over here to... Like a big smile and like, oh boy, here we go. All right, listen, if you are not giving to missions on a regular basis, what are you waiting for? In, in our fellowship, in the Assemblies of God, we support missionaries through the local church. This is not your tithe. This is above and beyond offering. And uh, so you have a choice. You can give uh, your financial support and your prayer support to our missionaries, or if you prefer, you can sign on the dotted line and take yourself and your family to the remotest parts of the world, live in huts or places thousands of miles from anybody that you know. The choice is yours. Give or go. Yeah. 
Missions offerings ought to just skyrocket. It's time for us to receive a harvest. It's time for us to receive our harvest. Just like Jesus mentioned in the parable of the soils back in Mark chapter 4, I'm believing for a harvest of 30, 60, even 100 fold. Now, any mathematicians in here real quick? We started with 20. What's 30%? 30% or 30 fold? Huh? Okay, six. Well, glory, I'll take 600, right? 10 would be 2,000. We're going to have to build us a bigger church. Glory to God. I'm believing that the promises of God are true. And we have been diligent to plant and to work and to till the soil. Have we had errors and have we made Absolutely. You know, any gardeners in here never killed a plant before? You know, some of you have like these amazing green thumbs and other of you, you touch it and it dies, it wilts, you know. Those of you, you know, you, you, you come and clean the building, okay. <laughs> but I'm believing for the promises of God to be fulfilled and I'm believing that he's going to do right here in our church, he's going to give us a harvest. Amen. If you're going to receive a harvest that I believe, that, that I believe God is promising us, then we are going to have to enlarge our tent. Verse 2 and 3 of this passage says, Enlarge the place of your tent, stretch out the curtains of your dwelling, spare not, lengthen the cords, strengthen the pegs that hold it in place, the foundation, for you will spread abroad to the right and to the left. Uh, your descendants will possess nations and will resettle the desolate cities. When the board and I started talking about this tent revival, I uh, did a little research, a little work between meetings, and I came back to them with a, an idea of what the cost might be involved to, to pull this off. Okay? And so uh, I came back with, the, with a quote for a tent that would seat 200 people. Because the largest event that we've ever done as Life Church is Summer Bash. Imagine that, a party, a celebration. That's the biggest event. And we had just over 200 people at, at one of our Summer Bash events. And so the last time Dwayne was here, Pastor Dwayne, our guest speaker for the revival, the last time he was here, there was one night when I think we had about 130 in the building. And uh, so I thought I had some great faith. We'll get a tent that will seat 200 and we'll set it up out here on the lawn, and we'll fill the tent, and it'll be glorious. Glory, right? We'll just have a time. But the board had greater faith than their pastor did. Pastor, we need a bigger tent. 200 isn't going to be big enough. Glory. How do you, I mean, how do you snuff out that kind of faith? No, brother, I'm sorry. We're, we're, we're striving for, to break 100. You know, so, you know, 200 is just out of the question. God can't, is there anything too hard for my God, right? So I went back and I got another quote for a tent that would seat 400. And long story short, we ended up with a tent that'll seat 500 plus. Talk about enlarging your tent. <laughs> I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. <laughs> In, in belief in him. Anyway, pastor, what are you going to do if you put that big tent up and that many people don't show up? You're going to look like a fool. You're going to have egg on your face. I'll be a fool for Jesus. But here's, here's what I do. I have, an, I, have a, I have a response to that. What are you going to do if you put that big tent up and, and, and 500 people, 300 people, 200 people, 100 people don't show up? What are you going to do? I'll tell you exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to celebrate every person that comes into that tent to worship the Lord and to hear the preaching of the gospel. And I'm going to celebrate everyone. If only one person gets saved during it, wouldn't it be worth it? If one person got healed, are you ready for this? Uh, after Margot uh, received healing from her allergies back in April, her mom is coming for the tent revival. Margot's mom, she'll turn 80 next June. And... Uh, Several years ago, she started having issues with her eyes and her vision. And now, 
I don't know the technical name, but she basically has tunnel vision. If it is not right in front of her, she cannot see it. She has no peripheral vision at all. She's starting to have issues with color and different things like that. When they come, you know, we have to make sure that things are out of the way on the floor. Uh, we, put, we put the LED lights in that I can't stand, you know, so that it's as bright as can be. And, and, but she is coming, and she said, if God can heal my daughter, he can heal me. Now, let me tell you what. Am I still on? Let me tell you what. If God, no, 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 no. when God heals my mama, I, and she's my mama. She's, I, I, God blessed me. I didn't get one of those cranky mother-in-laws, you know, that you just deal with. No, I love my mother-in-law. She's my, she's my mama. My mama's gone. She's my mama. When my mama gets healed and she goes back to northeast Missouri to a bunch of family, siblings, and neighbors that aren't living for the Lord, and she says, look what the Lord has done. We could have impact not only in Humansville, but Livonia, Missouri. Amen? All right, so what are you going to do when it, I'm going to celebrate whoever's here. I'm going to celebrate having faith to believe for the impossible. Faith to believe for miracles. All of that said, I believe God can fill that tent up. I told uh, the pastor up at Osceola, uh, they're canceling their Sunday night small groups so that their church can come and be a part. I said, listen, we're going to have 400 chairs. So your folks, if they want to bring their lawn chairs, they're, they're welcome to do that. We just might need them. And uh, so you, you the same way. You can, you can bring your lawn chairs. You know, if you want a special spot, you put your lawn chair there. That'll be your seat because it's your, it's your chair, you know. Here you can't do that. But in the tent, I'll let you get away with it. All right? Let me be clear here. The point, enlarge our tent, is not specifically a call to enlarge the physical tent or this physical building yet. I believe there all time will come for that. It's a call to enlarge our faith and our efforts. It's a call to think outside of the box. Amen? It's a call to stretch a little further, a little longer, do a little more, give a little extra push, a little extra effort, and see what God does. It's a call to do whatever we can to make sure that every person in and around Humansville, Missouri, has an opportunity to hear the message of Jesus. Amen? It, it, and it's not just to hear the message, it's to be radically transformed. That's what it's about. Huh. Jesus, listen, to, Jesus didn't come to this earth to get us a get out of hell card free. Or get out of hell free card. Hello? Huh? Amen? Now, that's a benefit that we get for having a relationship with him, accepting him as our Lord and Savior. That's the, that, it, it wasn't just for that. He also came to make us brand new creatures in him. The old sinful wretched man that I was has been transformed into a brand new creation. That's what we're after. I, I'm not looking for get out of hell free cards. I'm, we're not handing those out in the revival. I'm looking for radical transformation of lives. I'm looking for a touch and an interaction with a loving and living God that will last for eternity. God never intended for Life Church or any other church for that matter to be a bless me club or a protect me club. Hello? He never intended for Life Church or any other church for that matter to be an us four and no more. Well, I don't like a big church. Buckle up, buttercup. Until everyone within a 20 minute radius of Humansville has a personal relationship for G with Jesus, there's room for one more. There's 1,048 people, according to the sign on the highway, that live inside the city limits. Okay? You add, you add just the, the people with the address, you're going to be up to 2,500 probably. You do a 20-minute radius, you're five or 6,000. Glory to God. Let's get a bunch of people saved. Well, I just don't. Whew. Where am I? 
Oh, there it is. He didn't call us to be an us for and no more church. He called us to be a lighthouse for the lost. He called us to be a hospital to the sick. He called us to be a family for the broken and the hurting. He called us to love just like we have been loved by him. And in doing so, we will win many for his glory. Enlarge the place of your tent. Stretch out the curtains, the walls, and think outside the box. Lengthen the cords, stretch out the pegs. Speak out abroad, to the right, to the left, in front, and behind. Uh, I said a 20-minute radius, but let's start there, and then we'll go to the next 20 minutes, okay? And what will happen when we do these things? According to the Scripture, it says, And your descendants will possess the nations and will resettle the desolate cities. The descendants, those who just like you didn't know Jesus, when we do what we're supposed to do and they receive the message and it transforms their lives, they will move from darkness to light, from dead to alive, and the the fulfillment of the prophecies of God will happen. You want to take our town and our nation back for God? Enlarge your tent. Stretch a little bit. That's what stretch out the curtain. Stretch, lengthen the cords. Get outside of your comfort zone. Win someone to Christ. I don't know how. Okay, bring them to church and we'll win them for you. Train your child up in the ways of the Lord. Talk to your neighbor or your coworker about Jesus. Do something. But if you're just sitting there doing nothing, I promise you, you will get no results. I'm reminded of 2 Chronicles 7, 14. If my people who, uh, who are called by my name humble themselves and pray, seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, which is what we've been doing these last few weeks, a few years actually in preparation, then God says, I hear you from heaven, I forgive your sins, and I'll heal those around you. I'll heal your land. And I'm believing that God is going to do just that. I'm on my last page. Oh, it's just 12 o'clock. You're doing just fine. Oh, did you say you're okay? Oh, we are okay. Okay, good. Well, I'm going to finish either way. So here's the conclusion. Here's the conclusion. Revival begins in the house of God. It begins with us. It begins when the church folk begin to humble themselves and pray. Quit looking down our self-righteous, pious nose, thinking we got it all figured out. And if you want to get, if you want to be part of us, you got to look like us, you got to dress like us, you got to sound like us, you got to act like us. Well, the act like us part is probably pretty good, okay? Because we're trying to act like what the Bible tells us we're supposed to act like. But when when we will do that and we'll we'll, we'll humble ourselves and pray, turn from our sin. We're still working on that one, but we're we're getting there. Seek God. He will do, then he will do great and mighty things in and through us. I believe it. Last thing. When we do, when we enlarge our tent, when we humble ourselves and pray, when we seek the face of God, he gives us another promise. And it's verse 17 of Isaiah 54. Verse 17 of Isaiah 54 says, No weapon that is formed against you will prosper. And every tongue that accuses you in judgment will be condemned. This is the heritage of the servants, plural, servants of the Lord. And their vindication is mine, declares the Lord. It didn't say there would not be any weapons formed against us. Or there would not be any words that come against us. But it does say that those weapons and those words will not prosper. They will not succeed. And I don't know about you, but I'm tired of doing church the same old way. Week after week, we come and we sing a few songs. I preach a little message. We leave with a few goosebumps and we think all is well. And in the meantime, there's a a lost and dying world right outside the four walls of this building that desperately need to know that Jesus saves, that he loves, that he heals, 
that he forgives, that he knows their name and everything there is to know about them. Amen? God isn't calling us to have a little make-me-feel-good church service. He didn't call us to that. He didn't call us to have church. He called us to be the church. And it's time for us to step up and to step out. It's time for us to expand our tent. It starts with you and me doing our part in what God has called us to do. And when we do, when we do step out and do what he calls us to do, I believe we are going to see a mighty, mighty revival. Expand your tent. It starts with you and me, the children of God. My question today, who will go with me? Who will, who will step outside of their comfort zone, stretch out their tent, do something extra, something more, uh, a more commit. Listen, I'm, I don't want to send the wrong message. I, I check in my spirit right there. I don't want to send the wrong message. This is not just about doing something. This is about being all that God wants you to be. Don't settle for just a touch. Don't settle for a dusting. You know, either all in. Do you say that? God bless you. Either get in or, or you might as well get out. If, if, you, if, you won't, if, you won't, if you won't be sold out, I mean, he wants every part of us. And we, as human, it's just part of our nature to become comfortable and complacent. God help us to not be that way. So when I think of revival, I'm thinking about God, is my commitment to him secure? Yes, it's firm. I love him with all of my heart. He is the first and foremost thing in my life. So don't misunderstand me. But listen, there's still a lot that he wants out of me, that he wants from me. And, and he wants that from each of us. And so my challenge to you today is, let God stretch you. Let him stretch you, especially during this next week, next two weeks, as we're looking toward the revival, bringing people, being open to what he might want to do in us and through us. Listen, you may be thinking, well, I don't, I'm good with God, so I've just got to find somebody to get them saved. Listen, you better buckle up because you might get smacked by the Holy Spirit in the middle of one of these services, find yourself laying on your backside, looking up to heaven saying, I hear you now, God. Okay, been there, done that. Who said that? Did you? Man, y'all are talking to me a little bit today. I like it. Here's what I want to do. First and foremost, our primary goal as we wrap up here today is to make sure that every person in this room knows Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior. So here in just a moment, I'm going to give you an opportunity to respond, to know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And then I'm going to pray for us as a body of believers uh, in commitment to enlarging our tent and asking God to, to use us outside our comfort zone for something bigger and better than we might think possible. Amen? Bow your heads with me for just a moment. Across this room, you're here, maybe you're watching online, and you do not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You can't put your finger on a time in your life when you confessed your sins to Him, acknowledged Him as the Son of God, the one who paid the price for your sins and asked him to live in you and through you. If you cannot put a, put a finger on a time when you did that, then you are not saved. You are not going to heaven. And that, that's just a byproduct. But so many people, that's their focus. It's just, I want to go to heaven. Listen, it's about so much more than that. It's about living our lives for him. And you, you can't put a date, can't put a finger on a date or time I would love to pray with you today and, and lead you in, in no, coming to know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Is there anyone in this room watching online? Make a comment in the footnotes or in the messages. I'll come back and I'll pray with you specifically online. But anyone in this room, I don't know Jesus, but I want to before I leave here today. I want to give my life to him. I want him to forgive me. Anyone in the place, I need Jesus. Slip up your hand. Let me see you anywhere in this place. Anyone? I know most of you, but that doesn't mean I don't know your heart. I'll always know your heart. 
I need to know Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Okay, so then that, that, that should tell me that every person sitting in this room is a child of God, a follower of God. And so this next one should be easy. I want to I wanna join you, Pastor, in a, making a commitment to God that I want to be stretched. I want to be enlarged for His glory, for what He wants to do for His ministry, whether it's something inside the walls of this church or something that He has for you maybe in your workplace or in your home. But I want to pray and be part of the commitment to asking God to enlarge my tent, to enlarge me. If that's you, would you slip up a hand going up around the room? Lord, today you see us here in this place. And Lord, we've gathered together uh, in anticipation of what you're about to do uh, in these upcoming revival services. And I believe today is a rallying call, a rallying cry, a, a stirring stirring the body up in expectation and anticipation of what you're going to do. And in that, God, you're asking for a fresh commitment from us. And so we stand here before you, Lord, and we say, we're yours. We love you. We, 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 we're trying to live our lives for you. And so, God, we want you to use us to whatever uh, capacity you so choose to reach the world for Jesus. Stretch us, God. Enlarge our tent stakes, our, 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 our covering, God. The pegs, God, that, 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 are, that are holding us in place. The foundation. Lord, let it be strong. Stronger than ever before our foundation in you. And Lord, may you accomplish great and mighty things. Even the impossible through us in the days and the weeks and the months that are ahead. Lord, as we allow you to have your way in us today, we give you the glory and the honor and the praise in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Whew, I'm ready. I'm ready. Let me, uh, let me just, uh, it's a few minutes after. Eli, uh, get ready to uh, put uh, Break Every Chain on as we're, as we're dismissing here in just a minute. But... Uh, let me just remind you, this week there's going to be a lot of uncertainties. And so uh, if you're not on the messenger page, uh, let me know. We'll get you on there. That's how we'll communicate a lot of what's going on in the setups and the preps and all that stuff. Um, somebody, I meant to do this, and it just popped in my mind. Somebody asked me this week if we were going to take flyers and go door to door through town. And, and I was going to put a, I meant to put a sign-up sheet out there if, if people were interested in doing that. You could do that Saturday morning. Um, just quite honestly, I, I, with everything else I have on my plate this week, I just don't have time to do that. But if, if there's enough people that want to do that, we can, we can figure that out. There's plenty of flyers still back there. So uh, Johnny raised her hand. So if you're interested in doing that, talk to Johnny. You get a group together. And, and we'll get you the stuff you need to do it, okay? Um, tent setup is Thursday. Um, they will set the tent, but we have to unload all 400 chairs. So we'll need some folks here. You can either come and be here all day. Uh, we've got some work to do in the shipping container, get that rack in there. So we're going to have to move a bunch of that stuff out. There'll be stuff to do while we're waiting on them. Uh, Friday, we've had sign up for Friday. We may or may not have things to do in the tent on Friday. So just follow along. Be patient with me. I will, I will communicate with you as quickly, as early, and as often as possible so that if you can come and help and be a part, um, I, I appreciate it. I don't, I don't want to do this all by myself, okay? Uh, Thursday, uh, all I know, they said they will be here first thing in the morning. Now, they're coming from Monette, so first thing in the morning... If you're, a, if you're a, a Dish Network driver, first thing in the morning is 12.45 in the afternoon. But, you know, these folks, listen, this thing is huge. It's, it's 60 by 120, it, numerous poles. They got to drive all the, all the stakes and everything before they lift it. And so I'm guessing they don't want to do that in the heat of the afternoon. So I think they'll be here pretty early in the morning. Um, that's the, that's the best I can say at this point. 
If I hear from them otherwise, I'll, I'll put it out on, on uh, Facebook and stuff. But um, any, any help that we can get. Those of you that are preparing the meals, again, plan on about 15 people between the guest speaker, the musicians, and the, uh, and the sound guys. Um, about 15 people to feed in those. And if you, if you didn't sign up, check with somebody that already did. Uh, somebody signed up to help with cleanup or something. They just wrote across the bottom. I don't remember who it was. But um, whoever you are, there is always need for cleanup people. <laughs> so you come any and every night you want to help with that. And uh, that would be greatly appreciated. Correct. Correct. Uh, but we don't need, listen, we're not feeding everybody. That We just, we, yeah, we're feeding our guests. Okay, so don't come with the expectation, well, I'll go and help work because then I'm going to get fed. We're, we're planning for the 15 people that are our guests and taking care of them. Okay. So this isn't a church dinner. It's not a potluck. This is, this is part of what we're doing to bless our guests that are our guest ministers that are going to be here. Okay? If you have other questions, call me or message me, catch me, and uh, be happy to, to help with answering those. It's going to be a busy week, but it's going to be a great, great reward. And so thank you for all that you've already done and all that you're about to do uh, in the days ahead. Yes, we do have youth tonight at 6.30. Youth next week, obviously, will be part of the tent revival. And so we, won't, we'll, we will not have youth next week. But we will have youth tonight. I don't know what we're feeding them yet. Uh, it's usually Sunday afternoon before we figure that out. So, all right. God bless you. Have a good afternoon. And uh, we will see you. Uh, we have prayer Tuesday during the daytime and the evening. Uh, huh? No gym this week. And that's the ladies' meeting on Tuesday. Oh, quickly, two things. There's yard signs. If you don't take them, I'm going to put them out wherever I can find a place. So if you don't have a yard sign out yet, uh, or you live somewhere where you can put out an extra one or two, take them today because after today, they're going to go on off-ramps in Bolivar, and I still need to go to Collins and Fair Play. When we went to Jeff City yesterday, we hit a few on the way. But anyway, so take them today because after today, I'm going to find a place for them. The other thing is there will be a day this week when I will need uh, people who can put all of the lyrics into notebooks for, for, to make up the songbooks because at this point it's not dark enough to use the screen to project the words outside. So all the lyrics are going to be printed. And so I, when, that, when, I, when I know exactly what the music lineup is and I can hit print on that computer and get it to start printing... They'll have to be three-hole punched and put in the little notebooks like we use on Wednesday nights, and there are 200 of them. And so uh, as soon as I get that, and I know that, it'll probably be Tuesday at the earliest. So as soon as I know, I will put that out. And if we're here, you know, if it's Thursday, we're here setting up the tent, you know, a bunch of ladies or whatever want to come and do that, you're welcome to do that. I'll get that to you. But understand, there's going to be 200 of those books to put together. We're going to need help. All right? I think that's it. It's not, but that's all I can remember for now. <laughs> Thank you for everyone who has helped in preparation for this. And uh, again, listen, if, if we're just doing it for ourselves, we're missing the boat. So help get word out, invite people. Worst thing they can do is say no. Worst thing they can do is not ever talk to you again. You know, so. All right, God bless you, love you, have a good afternoon.